Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Deputy Governor Kim, Mayor Choi, co-chairs of the National Organizing Committee, Dr. Chang and Mr. Yi, co-chairs of the conference, Dr. Carlin and Dr. Choi, excellencies, representatives of the non-governmental organizations, the academia, different communities, youth that have been so critical to this event, ladies and gentlemen, by now you are all friends. Welcome very much to this closing ceremony. <laughs> Definitely it has been three days that are unique, those that we have spent here together in this beautiful city of Gyeongju. Myself, I can tell you I'm thrilled about the commitment, the enthusiasm for action that I have felt in every minute from each and every one of you. Congratulations for the energy you brought to this city and to this conference center. We have accomplished a lot of work here inside these facilities, and definitely we are all very hopeful. Myself, I can tell you I'm very hopeful because I'm more convinced than ever that the United Nations has done, is doing the right thing by partnering so strongly with the world of academia and the non-governmental organizations. And I'm very hopeful as well by the work done by the youth. They've come here in great numbers and they have confirmed themselves as a valuable pillar of the United Nations. A big applause to the youth. And I am very hopeful as well because there has been a lot of debates, discussions last night until very early hours of this morning and dialogue and discussions are truly a reinforcing path for our partnerships with the NGOs. So we all are definitely more enriched and we all benefit from dialogue and discussions. Definitely we are better equipped for the work that we have to do. And most of all, I'm very hopeful for what I have witnessed here, which is the hard work of those representing individuals, people that are marginalized, individuals that are most vulnerable, and I have seen the commitment to support them all worldwide. This is a fantastic engagement. So the Gyeongju Action Plan will be a truly useful tool for us, for the United Nations, for the NGOs, for the academia, in order to fulfill the sustainable development agenda. Here we have a lot to do, and this is a great taken from these meetings. We have an agenda to fulfill. And I sincerely hope that governments around the world will take notice of this conference, will know about the energy that has been conveyed here, and will create and reinforce the global networks to implement the agenda. I can tell you that uh, we don't know where the next uh, DPI NGO conference is going to take place, but I'm asking all the delegates to make noise at home and to provide for a great venue that this uh, 67 NGO conference can happen because we need to continue working together and a conference like this provides the right environment for that. In the meantime, let me confirm to all of you that you have my pledge that the United Nations will continue to support and partner with all the non-governmental organizations because they are critical 
to the successful implementation of the 2030 Agenda. This plan will not succeed with your support. Let me just end by saying how privileged I have been to making so many friends during three days here and also to lead this uh, conference, to lead the department that he's been leading this conference in such a successful manner. Thanks to all and each of you. Hope to see you very soon again. Thank you very much, Under Secretary General Gallick. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Scott Carlin, an educator from Long Island University in the United States. I'm Yu Gang Che, CEO of Dream Touch for All. We have been humbled and proud to serve as your co chairs for this conference. The planning process began many months ago, and it has truly been a remarkable journey together. Many people generously dedicated their time and their ideas to prepare this platform for us to exchange ideas and pursue our shared passion for promoting global citizenship through education. Would you please join us in thanking all of those who served on the conference planning committee based around the world with a warm round of applause The Sustainable Development Goals unite us because they embody our common challenges and our collective belief in equality for all human beings. Our discussions through roundtables and workshops and youth-led events and the very informative exhibits have been timely reminders of the enormous hardships and burdens that so many children, women, and men around the world are facing, the need for urgent action, and the opportunity for partnership that we all represent for each other. We have been lucky to have truly remarkable speakers travel great distances to share their experiences with us. And wherever you have traveled from, near or far, we are also grateful for your sense of community and dialogue and your desire to make a contribution. This morning, we'll bring to close our discussions and draw our conclusions with the help of our final speakers. It is now our great pleasure to introduce the Vice Governor of our host province, Gyeongsangbukdo, Mr. Hyun Gi Kim. Gyeongsangbukdo 행정부지사 김현기입니다. 아, 여기 계신 아, 모든 참석자 여러분께 아, 그리고 NGO 대표 여러분, 아, UN 관계자 여러분 반갑고 어, 진심으로 아, 감사드립니다. 아, 이제 제 66차 UN NGO 컨퍼런스가 아, 대단원의 막을 아, 내리고 있습니다. 아, 이번 컨퍼런스에서 보여주신 아, 여러분의 열정과 에너지가 분명히 우리 지구촌의 밝은 미래를 향한 희망의 메시지가 되기에 충분하였습니다. 어, 참으로 자랑스럽게 생각합니다. 어, 크리스티나 갈락 유엔 사무차장님, 어, 장순은 이라 어, NGO 컨퍼런스 조직위원장님, 어, 그리고 스카트 칼린 위원장님, 예, 어, 최유광 NGO 컨퍼런스 의장님. 어, 마흔 나세르 유엔 공보국 선임 국장님 예. 어, 그리고 전 세계 NGO 대학 국제기구 전문가 여러분 어, 가슴 벅찬 감동의 현장을 만들어 주셔서 참으로 고맙습니다. 어, 지난 3일간 어, 전 세계 81개국 NGO 대표와 학계 어, 국제기구 전문가 등 2,500여 명이 참석하여 유엔의 지속 가능 개발 목표 달성을 위한 어, 세계 시민 교육에 관해 다양하게 방법을 모색하고. 논의하였습니다. 그 결과 지속 가능한 개발 목표 실행에 맞춰 의미 있는 실천적 방안이 도출된 것은 
주목할 만한 성과입니다. 특히 우리 새마을 특별 라운드 테이블에서는 유엔의 지속 가능한 개발 목표 달성을 위한 새마을 운동의 역할을 새롭게 조명해 보는 계기가 되었습니다. 세계 곳곳에서 빈곤 해소 모델로서 승고세를 낳고 있는 우리 새마을 운동을 좀더 발전시키고 개발 도상국들의 어려운 이웃을 위해 헌신하는 실행으로 실행으로 만들어 가겠습니다. 존경하는 엔지오 리더 여러분 그리고 내외 기빈 여러분 역사는 늘 행동하는 자의 몫이라고 했습니다. 이번에 제시된 방안들도 구체적인 실천이 따라야만 비로소 실현, 실현될 수 있을 것입니다. 전 세계 시민단체를 중심으로 상호 긴밀한 연대와 협력 속에 행복한 지구촌 시대를 열어주시기를 바랍니다. 다시 한번 인류 공영을 열어가는 역사의 현장에 함께하신 여러분께 깊은 감사를 드리며 대한민국에서의 좋은 추억을 간직하고 안녕히 돌아가시기를 바랍니다. 귀한 인연, 아름다운 동행, 우린 오래도록 간직하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Please now direct your attention to the large screens and enjoy a video that chronicles the work we have achieved together through the last three days. The 66th United Nations DPI NGO Conference is the first in its history to be held in Asia with more than 2,500 participants from more than 100 nations worldwide. As a Secretary General of the United Nations, it's a great honor and pleasure for me to open and attend this UN DPI NGO Conference, the first time it is held in Asia, here in Gyeongju, Korea. This conference gives opportunities of discussion and coordination among the representatives of worldwide societies about the Sustainable Development Goals. The choice of the topic was a process that we engaged with the civil society representatives and of course also with the host NGOs that we were working with to identify the best theme that can build on the SDGs, but also picking SDG 4, which is on education, and using it as a platform to also help implement the other SDGs. I think the, the NGOs, the civil society organizations, are really, these are the people who are on the ground. No government and no organization, even the United Nations, will be able to fulfill unless the civil society is fully engaged and participates and assumes its part of responsibility in transforming the world. I have to admit that the NGOs have the grassroots experience, so they know what really is needed locally in the smallest minute denomination of a society. The conference is a starting point, it's not an end in itself. From now on, it is the responsibility of those who attended and as an action plan is saying, okay, what is my role, how can I do it? So I expect uh, some action item which can contribute to a more peaceful and more happy world for us to live in. you enjoyed that. We're now pleased to invite some very special global citizens to share with you a final message to take away from our conference. Uh, first, we're honored to bring you a video message from the winner of the 2016 Barke Global Teacher Prize from Palestine, Ms. Hanan Al-Harab. 
يشرفني أن أكون هنا المعلم الفائز بجائزة المعلم العالمية للعام 2016 وأنا من بين العديد من المعلمين في جميع أنحاء العالم الذين كرسوا حياتهم لتعليم وتمكين الأطفال والشباب التخلص من المعاناة وصولا لغد جميل إيماني بأن التعليم مهنة سامية ومقدسة كان سببا في اختياري لها غيرت حياتي بشكل كامل وعشقي لها نابع من شعوري بأنني أضيء حياة الكثير من الأطفال وأساهم في إنقاذ البعض من الضياع والتأثير على اختياراتي واتجاهات طلابي من خلال التأثير في سلوكياتهم وانتقال الأثر الإيجابي إلى أسرهم وبالتالي أمارس دوري الحقيقي في بناء المجتمع أشعر بأنني كالمزارع الذي الذي يهيئ لبذوره الظروف المناسبة لها لكي تنمو فيجني حصادا جيدا وحصادي مواطنا عالميا صالحا طالب هو ملهمي والصف هو بيتي الثاني نحن أسرة نعيش في هذا الصف في حياة متكاملة بكل تفاصيلها أعمل بمنهجية الحد من العنف عن طريق نلعب ونتعلم لإحداث تغيير سلوكي وأكاديمي فلسطين بلد التحديات وموطن الأمل وأن تختار مهنة التعليم في فلسطين فأنت اخترت الأصعب فالظروف الاقتصادية والسياسية صعبة للغاية علمتني تجربتي كمعلم فلسطيني مواجهة التحديات وإيجاد البدائل والحلول شعار الدائم أنا أستطيع لا لليأس ولكن التحديات كثيرة ويشكل الاحتلال أكبر هذه التحديات فأنا أعالج نتاجاته التي تشكل عائقا لي في الصف الدراسي وتظهر في سلوكيات الطلبة العنيفة وأخرى غير سلوكيات غير مرغوبة ويواجه المعلم الفلسطيني تحديات أخرى مثل عدم توفر الإمكانيات والموارد اللازمة في المدارس الظروف الاقتصادية السيئة والصعبة للمعلم الفلسطيني عدم تلقي التدريب والتأهيل والتكوين والتمكين الكافي للمعلمين نتحدث عن تغيير النظرة المجتمعية للمعلمين نتحدث عن الكرامة والهيبة والاحترام والتقدير والوضع الاقتصادي لكي يعيش المعلم حياة كريمة ولا يضطر للعمل في وظيفة أخرى بعد الدوام الرسمي ولكن كمعلمين نحن نربي ونعلم نحدد نوعية الأجيال التي نقدمها للمجتمع فالمعلم الذي يتحلى بقيم وأخلاقيات مثل الاحترام والتسامح والمحبة تقبل الآخر والحوار سيغرسها في نفوس طلابه وبالتالي سيقدم لوطنه مواطنين صالحين أو أي مجتمع سيعيشون فيه وإذا افتقد المعلم هذه الأخلاقيات كيف له أن يقدم للعالم مواطنين صالحين فاقد الشيء لا يعطيه لذا علينا الاهتمام بتمكين المعلمين ومنحهم الموارد اللازمة لتحقيق أهدافهم بعيدة المدى فالهدف من التعليم, من التعليم ليس فقط تعليم القراءة والحساب وإنما إعداد مواطنين يعملون من أجل الصالح العام والإنسانية مساهمين في مواجهة وحل التحديات العالمية لعالم أكثر سلاما وتسامحا وأمنا وأخيرا أتمنى أن ينعم العالم بالسلام والعدل والمحبة قبل حلول عام 2030 ومعا وسويا نحو مستقبل أفضل لأطفالنا وشبابنا وشكرا لكم Uh, Miss Alhorop, if you are watching us, thank you for sharing your very important message. Here to also speak on behalf of teachers, uh, please welcome Miss Teopista Balongi, founder of Uganda National Teachers Union, the Deputy Director of Uganda Education Services, and a commissioner for the International Commission on Financing Global Education Opportunities.
friends, I greet you all. Good morning. Let's remember that we are here for the most precious ones, the young people, our children and the youth, the precious pillars for the globe. May I welcome you through them? For them, I would like to leave you with the four messages as we close this conference. One, can we all unite? Let's get united and commit for quality, public. I'm very sensitive about the words I'm using. Quality, public, inclusive, gender sensitive education because this is the only means of having a global community. Let's campaign and ensure that public education remains on the political agenda globally. Secondly, allow me also to invite you to advocate for increased education financing because this is the biggest obstacle to education globally. The funding which is coordinated through our friends, the donor agencies, please let's consider a long-term strategy for supporting education because education is a long-term a long-term investment. Let's get away from the quick returns. We don't talk about quick wins in education. Can we also collectively support the mobilization of domestic financing for the poor countries? Colleagues, it is important to note that we are all aware of such factors that are depriving the poor countries of mobilization of resources domestically through tax unfairness, tax evasion, tax holidays that are unfair under the illusion of mobilizing investors. It is our collective action. Finally, please support the teachers. These are the heroes of the world who work under all the circumstances to transform the lives of people. Without them, let's stop talking about global citizens and yet we shall not stop talking about them. I would like to associate with the community I found here, the era of consciousness. Because all what we do, the biggest deprivation of peace in our country are three things, selfishness, greed and the apathy, all of which we have got the power to control through our conscience. May I therefore invite all of you, together we commit that we are going to be true to what we have done here by supporting quality education to transform lives. Please stand up. All of you stand up. Join your hands. 
Go in your hands. Go in your neighbor. Yes, go in your neighbor and raise up your hands. And we commit ourselves that we are here to transform lives through education. And we shall. Thank you, Ms. Burungi, for, for your message and for speaking from your heart. I think we're all deeply touched by the words and the spirit of what you just shared. We are now pleased to invite someone very special, Ms. Yuka Kimura of the Girl Scouts of Japan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yuka, and I am here today representing the World Association of Girl Guys and Girl Scouts, which has members in 146 countries around the world. I am speaking out on behalf of these 10 million girls and young women. I am a member of Girl Scout of Japan, and in December 2014, I was trained to deliver WAGS and UN Women's Voices Against Violence curriculum, which aims to eliminate and ultimately prevent violence against women and girls. I am here today to speak out for girls and young women's rights and to join the voices of 10 million Girl Guys and Girl Scouts to the global conversation around the new global goals and how education is a crucial mechanism to achieve these goals. Non-formal ed education is important to enable everyone, particularly young women, to contribute the new global goals as it often fills the gap left behind when formal education isn't accessible and is, therefore, the only education available. Non-formal education is an empowerment mechanism that builds young people's capacity and enables them to genuinely contribute to social change. If we are to eliminate gender-based violence successfully we need to tackle it at its root. And that means deconstructing the gender stereotypes and discriminatory social norms and attitudes that leads to. And then uphold gender inequality, which leads to gender-based violence. We need education, such as Voices Against Violence, to do that while children are young. After I raised my voice of 10 million at Youth Caucus yesterday morning, people, especially young women, shared their experience related with, the, uh, related with their gender inequality in their culture. Now, we are more than 10 million. All so much care about gender equality, like more than I do. To achieve global goals, our voice should be heard and counted. Young women are not only victims or potential victims, they are agents of change who are standing up, speaking out, 
and challenging the harmful social norms and attitude within their societies. Within an unswerving determination, making a positive difference. Young women are more than capable of contributing to the design, implementation, and monitoring of the new global goals at national level if they are adequately empowered. Girl guides and Girl Scouts are proof of this. As they are ones leading voices against violence in their communities and supporting transformative social change for equality. Thank you very much for this opportunity to raise my voice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kimura. Uh, next, we are pleased to present another uh, video message from the Secretary General's Special Advisor on 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals, Dr. David Navarro. I would like to thank the Republic of Korea and the United Nations Department for Public Information for hosting this conference. But most of all, I want to thank all of the organizations present Everyone in this room works tirelessly to amplify the voices and concerns of the world's citizens and to make a difference. The United Nations is committed to protecting space for civic participation. Your participation and inclusion in debates on global sustainable development is integral to our collective efforts for securing lasting peace and prosperity in this world. And that is why, when world leaders started to negotiate the Sustainable Development Goals, the United Nations conducted the biggest public consultation in its history. Close to 10 million people around the world took part in the My World survey. They identified education as their number one concern and the issue on which they wanted action. The Sustainable Development Goals are your goals. They're goals of the people of the world. And now it's the time to do the hard work, to implement action that will make sure that they're realized everywhere. We need your help. The world needs your help to make these goals known to at least 2 billion people by the end of 2017. The world needs the people to know about the goals so that they can hold their leaders to their promises. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Nabarro. Now please welcome Mr. Juan Pablo Celis a youth representative of the United Nations Association of New York and co-chair of the youth subcommittee that has brought such tremendous energy and passion to this conference. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to the youth. Woo. Okay, so for, for many years I have asked myself as a young person how can I make a considerable impact in people's life? I have encountered many obstacles, but now I think I have found the answer. I was born in Colombia, in the city of Armenia, the coffee region. I passed through my childhood, living in the middle of an ongoing conflict between the guerrilla group FARC and the Colombian government. For over 60 years, this conflict has internally displaced over 6 million people and killed more than 220,000. It was a very tense time for my country, socially and politically, and when I was 12, I had to walk to school by myself. Without the company of my parents, we were always insecure about my safety and my family always feared that I would be attacked. At an early age, it was common for me to hear in the news that people 
had been killed or that violence had arisen in another region of the country. Many of my family members saw the impacts of this conflict firsthand. After 2000, educational projects allow the government to expand in regions of the country that they have never reached before. These programs made students more aware about the conflict and caused many to be, want to be involved in the decision-making and problem-solving processes. Since, I'm being, since I've been involved with the United Nations, all my future goals have been clarified. I've seen the nonstop work and involvement of the youth within uh, the United Nations, and I have been inspired by their commitment. Youth is a stage of life that allows for energy, creativity, and innovation. This SDGs generation understands the value of coming together and standing up to inform the world of the importance of considering youth as key contributors in the discussion of education for global citizenship, as well as development and maintenance of peace and security. We have seen the culmination of our work in the form of the Youth Declaration. This declaration was launched this morning at the Youth Press Briefing. It highlights that young people must be integrated into formal structural power, and formal structures of power, and we are needed leaders and decision makers in the those spaces where the co course and direction of our society as a whole is determined. Also, we are delighted that the DPI NGO Conference Action Agenda includes youth's perspectives. You can count on us to put our energy towards achieving the SDGs. I thank all the young people that in one form or another have worked closely with us and the City College of New York for instructing me with the necessary knowledge, tools, and the United Nations Association of New York for giving me the very insight of the United Nations work, and the Department of Public Information, NGO Relations, for believing in me. Let's continue working together to leave our planet a better, better than we found it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salis. Next, to speak with the, uh, with the United Nations Secretary General's first ever envoy on youth, Mr. Ahmad Alendawi. Well, on the first day, I greeted everyone by saying just a greetings because it might have been the morning but your bodies with the jet lag maybe it was in a different time zone. But after three days, maybe a good morning would be a good statement. So good morning, everybody. Morning. Allow me first to thank uh, DPI and the executive committee of the DPI NGO relation, the city of Ganju and the Korea for, for being a generous host to this conference. I'm only left the speeches, in fact, after attended so many different sessions and interacted with many of the participants. And if there is a message I would like to share with all of you in this closing, that you might have produced a very important action plan, and you might have discussed very important topics. But for me, zooming out from the deliberations, the sessions, and the action plan, I think why this conference is very important because it shows the United Nations of the future, the UN we want, which is a UN that is open for everybody, the UN that has much bigger tent than bringing only diplomats and press to cover their discussions, a UN that brings together different stakeholders, academia, media, civil society, and youth organizations, and different contributors to make sure that the word we want is the word we'll be able to live in just 15 years from now. This conference is important because it's brought together that very strong reminder in the first year of the Sustainable Development Goals that nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. And that the agenda will not fall only as the responsibility of the governments, but it will be the responsibility of everyone. 
This conference is also a reminder that young people today are the largest generation of youth in the history of this planet are not staying silent. They are speaking up and speaking out, and they are coming forward, and they are making a unique contributions for how the world should be. They are assuming the ownership they should have assumed maybe a long time ago, but they were not always offered the mechanisms. Today, this is the largest attendance of youth organizations in the history of the DPI and GO conferences, and thanks to young people who are in the room here. We are at a, offered a unique opportunity. As the Secretary General of Ban Ki-moon always says, we are the first generation that can eradicate extreme poverty, but the last generation that could reverse climate change. No pressure. <laughs> so we have a unique opportunity today. I think your conference, our conference today, with the action plan that is putting commitment before the asks, and that is putting your own share of how you are going to take this agenda forward because you are talking about what others should do in order to honor this commitment. You are coming together to give this reminder to everyone that for this agenda to be achieved, we have to come together, we have to work together, and we have to honor the action plan that you put forward today. So as it was said, this is a new beginning because we do have a journey of 15 years and we have absolutely no time to waste. We have more goals than years to achieve them. We have 17 goals in 15 years. And we have many challenges out there, complex challenges, but we do have the biggest opportunity in the history of this planet. 3.5 billion young persons who are ready to contribute, and the United Nations today is ready to work with them. And your conference and the future of the DPI and Joe conferences will be very much depends on how much we can engage young people, not only in setting the declarations, but also in honoring them. So that's the task we have ahead of us. Globe, education for global citizenship is going to be the way forward because our world and most of the challenges we are facing are deeply interconnected and only a global mindset will be able to tackle them right. So that's the task and this is the commitment you have. I congratulate you all for having this historic action plan and for truly making it an actionable declaration with putting set of commitments, as I said, before you but you ask for what you want others to do. So let's get the job done. And we have 15 years from now and absolutely no time to waste. I thank you very much. I look forward to bring this declaration back with me to New York. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rendawi. Please now welcome the CEO of World Vision Korea, Dr. Yang Ho Sung. This is kind of tall for me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure uh, to stand here in this memorable moment on behalf of all the Korean NGOs. As you know, 60 years ago, Korea was one of the poorest country in the world. Many people were in much suffering after the severe war following the liberation from the foreign occupation. I believe that Korean people were able to overcome the hard times with the support of the international community. One example of the non-governmental international support is World Vision, which was started in 1950 for the war orphans in Korea with the help from USA as the donor. And now has become the largest NGO in the world 
as a partnership of more than 100 countries with 46,000 staff. Meantime, World Vision Korea was able to become a donor country working for the well-being of the most vulnerable children in more than 40 countries. Koreans who has themselves experienced extreme poverty have empathy and compassion toward the people who are in need. Not only that, Koreans have the heart of willingness to go through the hard times together. The global community has launched the Sustainable Development Goals to be achieved by 2030. Although the SDGs seems very ambitious, it is our common responsibility to achieve these goals, not only for our generation, but also for the many generations to come. Therefore, SDGs gives the global community an opportunity to work together in solidarity. I believe this is the spirit of global citizenship. This global citizenship is built upon the value of empathy and respect toward others and seeking to live together in harmony as global family. Therefore, I hope the global civil society, including Korean NGOs, place the spirit of global citizenship as the base of our work. Korean Development Corporation NGOs, for the last 30 years in particular, have worked with the underprivileged, underprivileged people in the community around the world, as well as domestically. We have been not only responding to their needs, but also advocating for the people who are in the most vulnerable situation. We will continue and strengthen our effort in working with the marginalized toward the achieving the SDGs, which we believe will lead into the well-being of all the people. We'll put our first priority to leave no one behind in sustainable development. For many years, World Vision has been working in fragile contexts, focusing on protecting refugees and displaced children. Through our experience in education in emergencies, we have found that opportunity of education is more than just learning. The children feel that they are loved, cared for, and they have positive perception in their future. Therefore, we believe that the most vulnerable children should be prioritized in order to achieve not only the educational goal, but also all the 17 goals of sustainable development. Finally, it is a pleasure to all of us having the, this meaningful conference in Korea. And I would like to send my sincere gratitude to, to UNDPI, organizing committee, and the, all those who have contributed to make this conference productive and very fruitful. Thank you. 감사합니다. Thank you, Dr. Yang. 
Next, I'd like to invite up a student from Korea University, a Korean youth representative that I've gotten to know over the conference days, and her name is Yesel Kim. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yesel Kim, a third year at the Korea University. It is such a great honor to have the opportunity to meet you all. Today, I want to tell you a story about a woman who is very close to my heart. Born in 1956, she was a young girl who had great passion and yearning for education. Even her dream was to become a teacher one day who would give hope to children in need. However, unfortunately, due to her financial circumstances, she was unable to complete elementary school and had no choice but to work for her family's livelihood. When she became a mother, she promised herself to provide her children the best educational opportunities. And as a result of her dedication, she had a daughter who was able to receive the blessings of education. I am grateful to have received the gifts of quality education through my mom. Thank you. And as someone who has experienced the fruits of education, I hope everyone in this world can share the same experience. And in light of my story, I believe this conference has been valuable and meaningful. Through this occasion, people had the opportunity to remember those who are unable to receive the educational privileges that we have. And through this occasion, we shared our strategies and methods to spread the quality education around the world. Now, the conference finishes, and we are going back to our daily lives. Some of you will go back to your UN offices, and some of you will go back to your NGOs, and probably some of you will go back to your universities as professors or students. However, I expect all of you and all of us who shared the spirit and energy in this conference to respond not merely by thoughts or words, but by action, wherever we are as global citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Yesel. We've heard from two of our youth representatives, but as you know, we've had youth representatives busy hubbing and doing all kinds of other activities throughout our conference. Could I ask all of our youth representatives uh, to stand at this point and be acknowledged for all the hard work that you've been doing throughout the conference? To the best of my knowledge, this is the largest youth representation we've had at one of these international UNDPI conferences, and I know I've been deeply touched and moved by the power and energy that the youth have brought here. Next, we'd like to introduce the Gyeongju Children's Choir.
Yes, what an amazing performance. Thank you, Gyeong's Children's Choir. And uh, now we have arrived what we can call the climax of the conference. We came here to agree upon a crucial plan for action that we can uh, all allow and follow. An action plan that will empower civil society in communities around the world to live up to their Agenda 2030 commitment and also empower all of us here to contribute to the implementation of the 17 global goals. 
there's been a very small team of individuals that have shepherded this process along through, uh, I guess, a somewhat slow start and a very uh, 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 energetic finish. How's that for a good adjective? So I'd like to invite up uh, Daniel Perel to uh, give us a couple of words of introduction to the process that has gone on to create the action plan and also invite him to bring up a couple of other individuals who have been uh, instrumental in constructing this document. Daniel? He's just to say a couple of words in the middle. Here I thought my colleagues were going to join me. Here I thought my colleagues were going to join me, but I find myself alone. Please. So thank you. So firstly, thank you, Yugang and Scott. The process of drafting the Global Action Plan was an example of education for global citizenship in practice. Over the past four months, it involved public consultations online, by email, at gatherings around the world, and at three open town hall meetings here. We heard diverse perspectives through civil society, through civil dialogue, and have arrived at a document that provides an important roadmap for advancing education for global citizenship, achieving SDG 4, and fulfilling Agenda 2030. This document clearly articulates our priorities and commitments for a holistic education for all in pursuit of the well-being and dignity of all humankind and the protection of the planet. I would like to express my gratitude to all those, including yourselves, who joined me on this journey, most particularly my colleagues, Professors Paul Lim, Brian Musas, and Mary Norton, who allowed me over the last five minutes to draft this. So at this time, please. So at this time, the four of us have the honor to read this document together and thereby put it forward for acceptance by acclamation. Gyeongju Action Plan. Education for Global Citizenship, Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals Together, Gyeongju Republic of Korea, 30th of May till 1st of June 2016. We, the NGO participants of the 60, 66th United Nations DPI NGO Conference, adopt this action plan so that all may realize the aspirations of the 2030 Global Agenda for Sustainable Development. Education is a human right, essential to well-being and dignity, and is key to achieving Agenda 2030. Further, an ethos of global citizenship is required in order to fulfill this bold, people-centered, universal, and planet-sensitive development framework. In order to achieve the Agenda 2030, we affirm the importance of Sustainable Development Goal 4, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong opportunities for all. Education shall be directed to the full development of the human personality and to strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. It shall promote understanding, tolerance, and friendship. In the spirit of global citizenship, in which our primary identity is that of human beings, all people, regardless of circumstances, should have access to lifelong learning opportunities that help them acquire the knowledge and skills needed to exploit opportunities and to participate fully in society. The importance of universal inclusion acknowledges the absence of a particular group or identity in text 
can lead to the exclusion of that group or identity in policy. We have made a conscious decision not to highlight any particular group or identity to ensure full inclusion and equal treatment of all people, especially those in positions of specific vulnerability and marginalization. It is unacceptable that diverse group memberships and identities have been used to deny the right to learn or otherwise marginalize individuals. In education, as in all things, the basis of non-discrimination is and ought to be our common humanity. In addition to literacy and numeracy, education must advance the cause of global citizenship, which promotes and integrates development of the whole human personality, emotionally, ethically, intellectually, physically, socially, and spiritually. Imbued with an understanding of our roles and rights and responsibilities for the common good in service to humanity and the advancement of a culture of peace, nonviolence, freedom, justice, and equality. Inculcates a sense of care for the earth, reverence for the interdependence, kingship of all life, and stewardship of all ecological systems for future generations strengthens the societal relationships among individuals, institutions, communities, states, humanity, and the planet. Empowers learners to assume active roles to face and resolve global challenges and to become proactive contributors to a more peaceful, tolerant, inclusive, and secure world. Nurtures a sense of solidarity and empathy in order to end poverty, protect the planet, ensure human rights, and foster prosperous and fulfilling lives for all. The pivotal role that arts, engineering, the humanities, mathematics, natural and social sciences and technology must play to catalyze innovation and fulfill the 2030 agenda. We further affirm the value of interdisciplinary education as a driver for creative expression and innovation. Education for global citizenship is an essential strategy to address global challenges, as well as to promote gender equality, facilitate eradication of poverty and hunger, build skills, eliminate corruption, and prevent violence, including violent extremism. It promotes truly sustainable production and consumption, mitigating climate change, and its effect protecting our waters, biodiversity, and preserving indigenous knowledge. The importance of the inclusion and participation of young people in decisions that affect their learning processes since educational systems have a profound and distinct and lasting impact on them. Local knowledge and best practices should be incorporated into practical education strategies for resilient communities and sustainable agriculture. Particularly targeted efforts should be made to include and empower rural people living in poverty, women, and disadvantaged groups 
through education. Community-based organizations must be given authentic power and capacity to prioritize needs, select projects, manage funds, and take action. This gathering builds on previous foundational initiatives, including but not limited to the 2013 UNESCO Forum on Global Citizenship Education, Preparing Learners for the Challenge of the 21st Century, and the 2014 UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development, Learning for Today for a Sustainable Future, and the 2015 World Education Forum, Transforming Lives Through Education. We commit to an education based on creative and critical thinking that enables all people to actively contribute to political and developmental processes in a complex, interlinked, and diverse global society, both within and beyond their borders. An education that teaches conflict resolution a deep appreciation for diversity, ethical reasoning, gender equality, human rights and responsibilities, interdependence, multilingual and multicultural competence, social justice, sustainable development, and values. Utilize the pillars of formal education, informal education and training, and advocacy and public information as a means to reduce inequalities that impede the achievement of the sustainable development goals, most particularly goal four. Strengthen diverse civil society-led coalitions around the world that contribute to the development of education for global citizenship. Work with the UNESCO Clearinghouse on Global Citizenship Education, the Global Education First Initiative, and the United Nations Academic Impact for the next 12 months, at which point a review of activities will take place. Support member states and the United Nations in their efforts to provide inclusive and equitable quality education at all levels early childhood, primary, secondary, tertiary, technical, and vocational training. Promote educational skills for social entrepreneurship and the sharing of appropriate information and communications technologies. Enhance educational understandings of tradition and innovation in a manner that preserves each culture's unique perspectives and principles and is consistent with human rights and global citizenship. Collaborate to formulate a comprehensive and succinct definition of global citizenship that can be used in curricula around the world. Harness strategies, expertise, and resources across the widest spectrum of civil society to unleash a range of educational initiatives that ensure inclusive, safe, and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all people. Work at the local level, engaging parents and community leaders to formulate plans to incorporate education for global citizenship in educational systems. Strengthen intergenerational partnerships in all aspects of our work. Translate and disseminate this document in multiple languages and implement it in diverse cultural contexts. We urge member states and the United Nations to prioritize education in policy and practice, support enactment by the United Nations for an International Day of Education that would serve as a means to promote education for global citizenship, 
learning for civic engagement, and literacy for grassroots empowerment. Provide an education that will enable all people to actively contribute to the political and developmental processes in a complex, interlinked, and diverse society. Rethink current models and structures of participation in decision-making processes at all levels. Allocate a greater percentage of public revenues to education, particularly through the reduction of global military expenditures. Provide adequate resources to address all the SDGs. In furtherance of Agenda 2030, promote the right to access information. Access to information and sharing and creation of knowledge contribute significantly to strengthening economic, social, and cultural development, thus helping all countries to reach the internationally agreed development goals. Adopt implementation approaches to education which respect local specificities, including the political, social, cultural, and historical dimensions without discrimination. Increase sustainable and renewable energy to ensure all people's access to education, health, environmental sustainability, and planet-friendly development. Explore ways and means by which education for global citizenship can be integrated into curricula and the agenda for education. Continue the important work the United Nations is doing in this field through, for example, UNESCO, as well as initiatives such as JEFI and UNAI. Promote experiential learning, interdisciplinary studies, online learning and intercultural exchanges to prepare students and educators to become global citizens. Devise and implement effective capacity building programs for education practitioners. Create the position of Secretary General's envoy to civil society to act as a liaison between the Secretary General's office and civil society. Therefore, be it resolved, we, the people gathered at the 66th United Nations DPI and GEO Conference, will continue to work in furtherance of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with a particular emphasis on promoting education for global citizenship. We thank the people and the government of the Republic of Korea, the province of Gyeongsangbuk-do, and the city of Gyeongju for their heartfelt and warm welcome and for hosting the 66th United Nations DPI NGO Conference and for their efforts to promote education for global citizenship and to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Thank you. thank our team, as you just have done, for their extraordinary effort. The town hall process was um, a very textured one where people struggled uh, word by word to try to find the right way to express all the sentiments that we all bring to this conference and we want the conference to affirm in terms of the work that we bring to this conference as NGO representatives. And uh, as was already mentioned, uh, the work continued well into this morning to try to finalize the language in a manner that would provide the strongest basis of consensus for us to uh, collectively agree and affirm this document. So may I ask for a motion to adopt this action plan? Okay. By a show of hands, can I see how many of you would like to hereby adopt the Gyeongju Action Plan as our outcome document? Yay. Hands up, people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so we hereby officially adopt the Gyeongju Action Plan, and we ask all of you... We ask all of you now to take this document home and actively use this document. Uh, use Twitter to talk about some of the elements in the document. 
and share the document with your colleagues. We will now have brief closing remarks. First up, please welcome Ms. Maha Nasser, Director of the Outreach Division of the United Nations Department of Public Information. It's afternoon now, so good afternoon. Uh, congratulations to all of you, to all of us, on the adoption of this uh, declaration, action agenda. There's another document that I want to refer to. It's not the action agenda, but it's an important document for us in DPI. Some of you have picked up a survey that was distributed at the outside as you were coming in. I think we would really appreciate if you can spare the time to fill out that survey and give it out back at the boxes. These will help us ensure that future conferences and all of the activities and the feedback we get from you is taken on board. I think I would like to start by thanking the co-chairs of the conference, Dr. Carlin, Dr. Choi, the National Organizing Committee co-chairs, Mr. Yi, Dr. Chang, of course, the governor, governor and the vice governor of Gyeongsangbukdo and the mayor of the city of Gyeongju. This is my 10th visit to Korea, so I feel almost at home. <laughs> Most of them have been to Seoul, but now I have another hometown, which is Gyeongju. But thanks to all of you as participants, the planning committee, and of course, everybody has thanked the main elements and speakers who have participated at the roundtables. But I want to also add to the thanks all the volunteers, the young people that you haven't seen, because most of the time they were either in the basement or behind you, the interpreters in the booths that have made it possible for those who needed interpretation to be active participants. The Secretariat, both the Secretariat of the National Organizing Committee, all of those young people, and some of them not, not so young. One of them celebrated her birthday yesterday, but she was still here at midnight. Justine, the belated happy birthday. Our very able moderator, Hannah and Albert, you're professional at this. And in the welcome dinner, Dr. Chang called me the architect of this conference. To some extent, it's correct. I'm an engineer, but I'm not an architect. I'm a civil engineer by, by training. But this, the idea of the conference came to me and started about three years ago. And it was through discussions that have taken three years, guided by the fact that what Dr. Nabara mentioned the largest consultation the UN has had before the post-2015 development agenda was adopted that identified by voices of 10 million people that education was the number one priority. And as a son of a refugee and an educator, I also think that education is the way, as Korea moved from being the poorest country to one of the rich countries and donor nations, education is the best investment we can make. I was born in a family of six children. My father was a refugee. He was an educator. But he didn't only educate in the school. He instilled in us the love of learning. When I was at Birzeit University, where I went to study, my father went back to study. He was the oldest student at the university. And I was an undergraduate with my father, with my sister, and two other brothers studying at the same time. So education is the way individuals move ahead. It is the way nations and disadvantaged groups move ahead. And I think the choices and the action agenda of this conference about focusing on education for global citizenship are key to our ability to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by the year 2030. This document 
I would like to congratulate you all for endorsing it. I sat for three hours last night as it was being finalized. It looked a little bit like UN negotiations, and I thought it was only member states who had disagreement, but civil, civil society also have different views, but they were able to reach this great document. But you shouldn't look at this as the end. Actually, this is the beginning. Your homework starts now. Take this back. and start thinking, what are you going to do over the next few weeks, few months, few years to make this happen, to ensure that while we work for the development, sustainable development of our societies, our economies, we also do so while being aware of the planetary limitations of our planet, protecting the climate, protecting the environment, life on the sea, life over land all the different sustainable development goals. How do we do that at the individual level, at the family level, at the neighborhood, at the NGO, at the government, at the local government, at the national government, at the global level? It's a tough task, it's an ambitious agenda, but I know that with the spirit fueled by the youth among you and the youth in your hearts, we can do it. Thank you very much. Come some Nida. Thank you, Maher. Next, I'd like to invite up Mr. Cyril Ritchie. He is president of the Conference of NGOs in Consultative Relationship with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Thank you, Cyril. Distinguished delegates, sisters, and brothers of civil society, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, UNDPI 2016 conference has spent three days of debates and interactions focusing on education for global citizenship. We are all aware of the complexities of establishing and implementing meaningful principles, goals, targets, and indicators for global citizenship, a concept that is simultaneously universal and local. The Conference of uh, NGOs in Consultative Relationship with the United Nations has for 68 years been an interface between NGOs and CSOs and the entire United Nations system. And we look forward to promoting the conference's outcome document, the Jongju Action Plan, particularly insofar as it reflects young people's aspirations and responsibilities. The conference has related global citizenship principles and programs to the sustainable development goals in order to help ensure that their implementation gets off to a sound start. And it is striking how many SDG concepts and terminologies invoke attributes of global citizenship. Of global citizenship. In my longer written text, I refer to seven or eight of the SDGs. Let me only illustrate one of highest importance, uh, the intense, that intense global education is necessary to overcome the patriarchal attitudes that so persistently impede gender equality required in goal number five. The examples that there are of linkages between global citizenship and the SDGs illustrate the crucial importance of open and confident cooperation between governments and civil society if we are to achieve lasting results for the people of the planet. In many parts of the United Nations system, open consultation between governments and civil society is the watchword and the normal practice contributing to building confidence and security in programming and interaction. And education for global citizenship also benefits from open and innovative dialogue and partnership between governments and civil society. But I leave you with the message that the Secretary General 
of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, uh, gave to us in his opening address when he stated bluntly and courageously that dialogue and partnerships are ceasing to be the pattern in too many parts of the world. Over the past 10 years or so, there has been a clear and deeply disturbing trend in a number of countries towards an increasingly restricted space for civil society. There have been threats and intimidations of organizations and individuals who have exercised their rights as citizens to speak up on human rights, fundamental freedoms, democracy, and the rule of law. Some public officials have made derogatory statements about NGOs and CSOs, which are only carrying out their legitimate civic responsibilities of advocating for just social, environmental, educational, and economic policies. In short, education for global, citizens, global citizenship cannot expand and take root if civil society is denied the exercise of its proper citizenship roles at the national level, building confidence and security at the international level requires that at the national level, governments demonstrate confidence in citizens and their associations. Global citizenship requires no less. Thank you. Thank you, Cyril, for those important words. Uh, next, I'd like to invite up a, a dear colleague and mentor, Dr. Mary Norton, NGO DPI Executive Committee member. Thank you, and again, good morning. It's maybe afternoon by now. But a few days ago, we all came here as strangers, and we're leaving as friends and colleagues with a deeper understanding of each other. So on behalf of the executive committee, I thank you for that wonderful, wonderful experience. And please know I will carry that back to my own classrooms in the United States. And just one final word. I am American Irish descent. So I would like to share with you a little bit of my own culture today with a final word, and it's called an Irish blessing. So may the road rise to meet you, the wind always be at your back, the rain falls softly on your land, and the sun warm your face. And until we meet again, may the good Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Norton. Now we welcome Mr. Choi Yang Shik, Mayor of the beautiful city of Gyeongju. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a time to close 66 UN NGO conference now. I really thanks distinguished participants from all over the world. I I'll give my sincere thanks to special people. Co-chairman Jang Soo-nung and 
Ilha and Mara Nasser, director of UNDPI. Uh, I think I'm sure that uh, this conference uh, uh, took us new land, new vision, and new hope for the global citizen. Uh, Mr. Mar Nassar, please give me back the territory of this area of UN <laughs> for last three days. Please give me back with new hope and new vision for the citizens of Gyeongju. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Che. Now we welcome uh, Mr. E. Ilha, co-chair of the National Organizing Committee of Korea and chairman of the National Association of Nonprofit Organization Korea. Uh, dear key staff uh, of UNDPI and Mr. Cyril Ritchie, President of Congo, and Mr. Kim hyun Deputy Governor of Gyeong Gyeongsangbukdo, and Mr. Choi Yang-sik, Gyeongju City Mayor, a distinguished guest, dear my NGO colleagues, I am very pleased to see the successful conclusion of the 66th UNDPI NGO conference. The Korean NGO community has actively participated in a very UNDPI NGO conference since 1996. Hence, it is great honor to have hosted this conference in the historic city of Gyeongju for the first time in Asia to discuss the challenges. Education for global citizenship is a critical part of the required action in achieving sustainable development goals. Through our fruitful roundtable discussions, we now have a better understanding of our target audience for such education. And we have learned the importance of education in the area of STEAM. That include science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Also, we have revised our responsibilities as global citizens to prevent climate change and to protect our planet. And in a special roundtable meeting, we have discussed how to share Korea's experience of Semarundong with the developing countries to eradicate poverty. In the 46 workshops held in active participation of NGOs, many important issues were addressed to resolve challenges in reaching SDGs, including how to establish good governance and laws in compliance with SDGs, and extending educational reach to the people in neglected places, including women, children, and disabled. We adapted Gyeongju Action Plan from this process. It is very confirming to know that we all are in this together, and this gives us the courage to face the challenges ahead. We have seen, we have also seen the opportunity of deeper collaboration among the NGO colleagues from all over the world as a global family. It is now time to leave our delightful festival 
and get back to our important mission. I thank all of the participants and the staff of the de organizing committee of the conference for your contribution. Especially, I'd like to express great appreciation to the staff of UNDPI for their effort in planning and management of this conference. Also, the officials of Gyeongsangbuk-do and Gyeongju City for the event sponsorship and for providing security services. Last but not least, I would like to thank all of the experts who shared their wisdom in the round table, as well as those who led the workshop throughout this conference. In addition, I think I, that I have to give a special appreciation to Gyeongju Children's Choir. <laughs> they gave wonderful final performance for us. My angel colleagues uh, let us reform our mission and responsibilities in the advancement of human society and march in harmony with the United Nations toward achieving our mutual goals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yi. Now I'd like to call up Dr. Soon Hyung Chang, co-chair of the National Organizing Committee of Korea and president of Handog Global University. As closing the last session, uh, I have to say the 66th UN NGO DPI conference was full of the happiness and warm heart moment of all of us. Last three days was remarkable and gave us the assurance that you can fully change the world if you are all together. Uh, now, now the, this conference, to me, uh, considering three, uh, you know, uh, looking back to three months ago, uh, it's a miracle. Yeah? So, as, but uh, for this success, for the success of this conference, uh, I must acknowledge uh, several people uh, who devoted almost effort for this conference. So especially, you know, of course, you know, I'd like to uh, thank uh, you know, Gyeongsang uh, Province, uh, Governor Kim Yong, uh, Kim Gan Yong, and the Vice uh, Governor uh, Kim Hyung Gi, and also, uh, also several you know, Direct General, yeah, Kim Jung Hyun and Park Sung Su and uh, Yuni Young, yeah, I, I, this three person really you know, support me and also uh, Gyeongju, Mayor of Gyeongju, Che Yangshik and uh, Vice Mayor Lee sang -woo. And uh, of course, you know, uh, I like to acknowledge uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Minister Yun and to the, uh, from the older level of the ministry, I like to thank and uh, also, uh, of course, you know, I like to uh, acknowledge the Secretary General Ban Ki Moon and the Under Secretary Krishna Kalak, and especially uh, Mahor Nassar. Yesterday, I'm, I'm uh, the uh, architect of this conference I mentioned, and uh, Jeffrey Bress, yeah, also, I like to. Uh, so now, now the, uh, I'm, uh, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to you know, acknowledge especially Secretary Office. So uh, Mr. Che Yu Gang, he's the co-chair of this conference, but actually Secretary General of the uh, Organizing Committee. So I'd like to you know, uh, acknowledge Mr. Choi here. Let's give the you know, big hand. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I like to acknowledge the uh, Mr. An, uh, Miss An Jung Yi, An Hyun Jin, and also is Han Song Ah. Also, you know, I like to thank the uh, workshop. And also, you know, uh, I like to thank um, you know my co-chairman, Mr. Yi La, but uh, he uh, also. Uh, uh, Secretary General of the MPO, Kim Hee Jung, is there here? Okay, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that. Okay, good. And uh, also, uh, lastly, you know, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, my colleague of the Handong Global University, many students, many professors, I'd like to thank, but especially, I'd like to uh, thank the Professor Won Je Chun, and the Professor Park Won Gon, and also Miss Yeol Jin, they are work very hard. And uh, thank you, uh, nearly a lot. And uh, I'm very happy uh, for this conference. I very emphasized to my Secretary General uh, office, and uh, this conference must be very warm conference. So you must treat all the people. Like, you know, every person is very important. So like the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. So they try to do their best. You, they try, and I try to best to give it a warm, heartfelt conference. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, you have discussed a lot, but uh, you will continue. And uh, when you go back home, the you should be there at your old age. However, after conference, the thing is you will never be changed to correct. You will never be the same. So you will improve. So, uh, last thing, so through the, the things you learned in this conference, you must change the world. You must change the world for the better world. Why not change the world? Okay. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Uh, before my closing remarks with Dr. Scott, as a co-chair of the conference. Since Dr. Zhang gave us the credit, I'll give this my full credit to the member of the uh, secretariat. Would you please stand up if anybody here from the secretariat office? Please. Maybe most of them are not here to serve out somewhere for you. Thank you very much. Please have a seat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I thank you for being with us till the very end. Your presence at the 66 UNDPI Angel Conference has been invaluable to widening the spectrum of voices that have been heard and the stories that have been shared. Three days ago, we united with a common goal to initiate change for a better tomorrow. And today, I am hopeful that through this conference, we gained a better understanding on how to initiate such change and live out the values of global citizenship. Throughout the conference, there may have been occasions where our differences were highlighted, yet there are times when our stories overlapped. And through such overlaps, we were able to tune our ears to new thoughts and ideas and ultimately educate ourselves. I believe that our time together has been and still continues to be reflective of our endeavors to mobilize more people to secure a promising future not just for ourselves, but for the next generations. Therefore, it is important for us to continue the conversations that took place in the roundtables, workshops, town hall meetings, and youth caucus 
and to strengthen our partnerships in achieving the sustainable development goals. Thank you for being joining us, and let's continue to work together on our journey to safeguard our planet and humankind. Thank you. 감사합니다. After a, a couple of very brief remarks, we will uh, indeed wrap up this session with a Taekwondo performance. But before we uh, begin that, I do want to express my profound gratitude to Mayor Choi and his hospitality here in Gyeongju, an extraordinarily beautiful city. And this is a really an extraordinary building that we've been able to host this conference in. So thank you. Dr. Chang expressed that he wanted this to be a warm-hearted um, conference. And I think we all owe him a round of applause because he more than exceeded his expectations. Um, I worked very closely with the DPI team and I just want to express my profound gratitude to Christina Gallick, uh, Maher, uh, Maher Nasser, Mr. Jeffrey Brez, and um, Ms. Hawa Diallo, in addition to all the other uh, DPI staff that are here and back in New York who played such an instrumental role in organizing this conference. Thank you. While I get to enjoy this stage with Yu Kang, I also want to express my deep and profound gratitude for um, all the people that I've worked with, particularly my colleagues from New York, in helping to organize and put together the conference. I think the action plan we put together is really an exceptional document. I hope you agree, and I hope you'll give a rousing applause for our team just one more time in what they've accomplished. Global citizenship is not a new idea. It has been with us for centuries. But we do wish to express that a new era is underway. Uh, this is the SDG generation, as Dr. Chang has expressed. And the SDG generation pledges to leave no one behind. That is an extraordinary accomplishment that we achieved at this conference and that the SDGs stand by. It really does mark a new era for us. So this is a truly powerful and historic commitment. We leave this conference committed to the idea that global citizenship must be taught in all of our schools and it must be integrated throughout the curriculum wherever appropriate. Global citizenship and global citizenship education is one of our most important tools in these early years of implementing the SDGs. So we move forward together in implementing these SDGs in a manner that will leave no one behind. That's our commitment to the world today. Thank you. Where's that final page? Do we have that written down? So I'd like to invite up the Taekwondo Federation, Federation. World Federation Demonstration Team. Thank you. Got a little paper shuffling here.
It's cold. I'm hungry, and it hurts. It's a painful cry from children suffering from all parts of the world. And these children grow up with a strong body, with the confidence of hope, with the indomitable spirit of Taekwondo, through the preachers of love, you. The children who have been trained by their dreams and hopes want to send you a thankful message. And they promise to become another light of hope for children who are suffering just like how they were. Finally, we all become one and sing together the greatest love of all.
grow your love. We grow up confident and joyful. And we promise to become one like you. Thank you, everyone. You are the greatest love of all. We love you. Children's our future. Teach them, let and let them lead the way. 
Shut up all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. I decided long ago never to walk. Yeah.